African swine fever is a devastating disease of domestic and feral pigs, which has spread from Eastern Europe to the West since 2007. This disease causes almost 100% mortality, especially in domestic pigs. From a global perspective, it significantly affects domestic pig farmers and the pork market. Following the outbreak of the African swine fever in China, production has fallen sharply and world market prices of pork are rising. African swine fever unexpectedly hit the Czech Republic on the 26th of June 2017, when a carcass of a positive wild boar was found in the eastern part of Bohemia, near the city of Zlín. The case was not natural spread from Eastern Europe, but most probably anthropogenic transmission. At that time, the Czech Republic was faced with the question of how to proceed in order to eradicate the disease, what measures to use, or if it should use the same measures as in the Baltic region and in Poland. In the end, the Czech Republic went the other way, and after 12 months, the disease was eradicated, with the Czech Republic being the first country in the European Union to do so. When deciding on the measures, it was mainly a question of how large an area to define as an infected area, whether to hunt wild boar or not, whether to feed them or not, and how much to invest in the measure. Until then, the European Union countries affected by African swine fever had implemented measures over a large area, but without an active approach and also without much success. However, the Czech Republic decided to implement a wide range of active measures based on the latest knowledge on the behaviour of wild boar. Studies carried out by the Faculty of Forestry and Wood Sciences of the Czech University of Life Sciences in Prague significantly helped in the decision-making process. In particular, telemetric monitoring of feral pigs, which the faculty had been conducting since 2012. The scientific team, led by Milos Ježek, was one of the first to monitor feral pigs using GPS technology and to extend the monitoring method to modern biologging technology. Based on these results, a relatively small area of 100 square kilometers was thus defined as an infected area, and hunting and feeding of wild pigs was prohibited for the first three weeks. After it was clear that the disease was in a clearly defined and relatively small area of about 20 square kilometers, the area was divided into high risk zone and low risk zone. After four weeks, the core area of the low risk zone was fenced with an electric and odour fence. It was checked every day to make sure it was intact and operating correctly. Furthermore, the harvest of agricultural crops, especially maize and wheat, was stopped in order to provide wild boar with shelter and sufficient food, thus reducing the likelihood of their seasonal migration outside of the high risk zone. One month after detection of the first case, Hunting in the low-risk zone was allowed. Only trained hunters could hunt under strict veterinary rules. They could only hunt individually and were not allowed to use hunting dogs. The captured wild boars had to be burned in a rendering plant. At the same time, the state paid hunters a reward and compensated the owners of hunting grounds for the loss of game. A total of 2,000 hunters were trained in this way. The next step was to ban people entering the high-risk zone from public roads. At the beginning of September, hunting was also allowed in the high-risk zone. Only three hunters could hunt in one hunting area and only once every three days. Wild boars had to be left in place and their disposal was taken care of by the veterinary administration, including disinfection of the hunting site. A special unit of police officers joined these hunters during October. They hunted wild pigs here for one month. This procedure was successful, and at the end of the year it was clear that the infection had not spread outside of the high-risk zone. The last wild boar positive for African swine fever was found on the 15th of April 2018, and it was a carcass several months old. A total of 212 dead feral pigs were found in the area for African swine fever, and 18 positive animals were caught in the high-risk zone. In the spring of 2019, the Czech Republic was recognised as free from African swine fever and thus became the first European country to succeed. This success is mainly due to the very rapid response of the competent authorities and the use of the latest scientific knowledge on the behaviour of feral pigs. The Faculty of Forestry and Wood Sciences played an important role in this regard thanks to its project on the telemetric monitoring of feral pigs. 
To obtain data for the correct decision-making process in determining measures to stop the spread of African swine fever in the Czech Republic, it was essential to provide relevant data on wild boar behaviour. The Faculty of Forestry and Wood Sciences was thus able to offer the results of telemetric studies to a group composed of experts in veterinary administration and hunting. The telemetry team of the faculty started monitoring wild boar in 2012 and thus obtained sufficient data set for exact monitoring. The Faculty of Forestry and Wood Sciences uses modern monitoring equipment to track wild boar. A telemetry collar containing a GPS module which sends the position of the marked animal every 30 minutes via the GMS gateway. It also contains a hybrid biologger composed of a high-resolution accelerometer and a high-resolution magnetometer. They can then be used to obtain information about the behaviour and the exact route of movement. These values are recorded by the sensor at a frequency of 10 Hz, that is 10 times per second. Based on data from the Biologger, researchers from the Faculty of Forestry and Wood Sciences have developed a behavioural model based on data from a highly sensitive accelerometer sensor. It records the acceleration in three axes, as shown on the green, red and blue axes. The axes are synchronised with the wild boar on the video. For example, the red axis shows the position of the wild boar's head and a small scale where the boar is feeding. Subsequently, there is a movement when the wild boar raises its head and then turns and leaves. In this case, walking is noticeable on all three axes. The subsequently compiled model using the machine learning method is able to automatically determine the behaviour of the wild boar. With great accuracy, we can distinguish walking, foraging, resting, running or standing. In detail, we are also able to detect even when the wild boar is being vigilant. Furthermore, using data from the accelerometer and the magnetometer, we are able to reconstruct the exact path of the wild boar using the dead reckoning method. The magnetometer gives us information about which direction the wild boar is facing and how the wild boar is turned, and the accelerometer gives us information about its acceleration. This can be seen on the compass arrow, which shows the wild boar's orientation. Then we can use an algorithm to calculate exactly where the wild boar went. We also use GPS points to correct and eliminate accumulated errors. These data thus provide us with a really detailed look into the life of wild boar. These can then be used for crisis management decisions. For example, the size of the home ranges was crucial in determining measures against the spread of African swine fever. And these data were used to determine the right size of the high-risk zone and low-risk zone. Another analysis was the study of the intensity of the use of feeding places by wild boars. We can demonstrate this on the example of one collared female and her spatial activity for five consecutive days. It can be seen that she used feeding places as the main source of food. And if we imagine that we stopped feeding, it is highly likely that she would leave this place. This would cause it to migrate and increase the probability of the disease spreading. It was the problem of feeding and its influence on the behaviour of wild boars that proved to be insufficiently documented. The Faculty of Forestry and Wood Sciences, therefore, decided to carry out an experiment with wild boar. It installed 22 feeding machines on the university hunting grounds and, since 2018, has been carrying out an experiment to clarify the effect of feeding on the spatial activity of wild boar, their social contacts and their reproductive ability. During the year, the amount of feed is manipulated and the results are further analysed. Another issue that needed to be addressed was determining the population size. Therefore, verification was performed using the radom encounter model method, which uses images from photo traps to give information about abundance. Photo traps are randomly distributed in the field, and the density is then calculated using the model. Data from telemetry, such as distance daily travelled or speed of movement, are also important for determining parameters. Thanks to the possibility of reconstructing the entire route, we are able to find this out very accurately. At the same time, it was necessary to answer the question of the permeability of electric fences. The Faculty of Forestry and Wood Sciences once again carried out an experiment directly in the field. More than six kilometres of electric fences have been installed in an area where more than 15 wild boar biologer collars have been identified. 
Using modern tracking collars, we also tested the frequency of visits and contacts of live wild boar with wild boar carcasses. These play an important role in the transmission of African swine fever, and their attractiveness to healthy feral pigs has not yet been sufficiently studied. It is very evident that scientific outputs represent a very important basis for crisis management. Their use in the fight against African swine fever in the Czech Republic is one such example. Based on scientific knowledge, new measures were applied and were very effective. Proof of this is that the crisis plans from the Czech Republic have been taken up by most European Union countries. In September 2018, there was a case of African swine fever in a wild boar population in Belgium. The Belgian authorities used the same model as in the Czech Republic and their approach was also successful. The last positive case of wild boar was found in November 2019, so it certainly seems that they managed to stop the infection. The Faculty of Forestry and Wood Sciences continues to test measures for the spread of dangerous diseases in wild animals and applies scientific outputs in practice. Mm -hmm.